Hello, everybody. Rick Manning, President of Americans for Limited Government here. Um, you know, we've got some interesting things going on and a lot of news, but I want to focus on some of Hunter Biden's shenanigans today because I think they're all coming together and are becoming a pretty powerful, uh, actually, proof point that the president of the United States is uh, is compromised in ways that we can't imagine. Um, but Hunter Biden shenanigans are so over the top that it's almost impossible to ignore them. Uh, Business Insider had a report just yesterday which revealed a couple of the buyers of Hunter Biden's art. You remember Hunter, Hunter Biden's artwork is, you know, the a guy who had never sold a piece of art, his life goes off and has uh, apparently becomes, is a budding artist at the, in his mid-40s and is uh, has highly sought after pieces of, of art um, and have brought in millions of dollars uh, in sales. So, you know, it's a it's a great gig if you can get it. It's, you know, art dealing has uh, uh, traditionally been a way of laundering money. And I guess there's no laundering money laundering scheme that can be left unturned by the Biden, uh, Biden family. But in, in this one, the, the person who was uh, revealed to have bought some of the art, and, and this isn't all the art, but some of the art, um, was a developer from, uh, uh, from California, from the Los Angeles area. And she had been at the White House on a number of occasions. And she recently got named to the head of a, to be part of a commission dealing with American art. So it's a, and when you look at it, you just say, wait a second, what's going on here? Um, the, when you look at her, who she is, she's a, you know, a Democrat contributor. And the, uh, her name is Elizabeth Hirsch Naftali. Um, she's given, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to the Democratic National Committee to buy to the Biden campaign and to others, um, in the Democrat world. And, um, and apparently, um, she also is somebody who, uh, apparently, she also got the ability, she was announced that she was going to be part of the Commission for the Preservation of Americans, America's Heritage Abroad. So, you know, now you can't say there's a quid pro quo. You can say that one of the people who bought Hunter Biden's art got appointed to a commission. And but once again, given what we know about the Biden family and the and what's been going on, uh, it's pretty clear to me that there's a you sit there and you look at it and you say, hmm, if this were a single incident, you'd say, you know, that's there's something something's going on here. There's something wrong. But when you have a um, when you have a pattern, a pattern of behavior, it, it's pretty clear that um, patterns of behavior matter. And it's a. Uh, and that's uh, and this pattern of behavior is one of where we see constant, you know, constant abuse. So, you know, we've got a somebody that's buy some art, gets an appointment. Uh, you know, graft is this kind of old fashioned graft. And uh, uh, there was a sp speaker of the house way back when um, when Ru Mo when Newt Gingrich became speaker in uh, 1994. He replaced uh, Speaker uh, Jim, uh, Jim Wright from Texas, and Jim Wright was taken down because he bought, he wrote a book, and he had a bunch of people who were wanted to influence his office, um, you know, actually go ahead and uh, and pay for the, you know, go ahead and do something with that book. They all bought it, and he got money, and uh, and that took him down. That was a major ethics violation back in 1994. Uh, not so much now, I guess, but, uh, you know, Hunter Biden's doing what Hunter Biden does. Um, second thing that he's in the news for that's interesting is his pleading not guilty from plea deal. Um, you know, the Hunter Biden attorneys uh, are, are, you know, I don't know where he found them, but Latham and Watkins, his law firm, is a very well-respected law firm. And apparently one of the attorneys at the law firm contacted the uh, the judge, the clerk, you know, clerk at the judge's office and the clerk at the judge's office says very clearly from the notes that the person identified themselves as being part of the House Ways and Means Committee uh, legal team that had submitted a, a brief on the um, on the plea deal, opposing the plea deal for Hunter Biden. 
and had asked that uh, certain aspects of that brief be re be um, uh, hidden from view, redacted, um, taken out of consideration, removed um, under false pretenses. And so the judge got this notification from our clerk and said, wait a second, so from the Democrats just called us and said, uh, you know, from the Hunter Biden team just called us and said to change the documentary evidence that was offered by the House Ways and Means Committee. Now, this judge, who's a Democrat, got re really kind of irritated about this, and the plea deal fell apart because of it. The judge wanted to, at, you know, asked uh, the prosecutors repeatedly, are, are you sure this is all you want to charge him with? Meaning that the judge had looked at and, and you know, s smelled a rat. And um, that, so, the, you know, but right now we have Hunter Biden pleading not guilty to two charges of tax evasion dealing with from 20, one from 2017, one from 2018. And it's a, and that will be the, uh, and that's what the, there will be a trial on. Now, presumably the prosecution could bring other charges um, since the plea deal is no longer on the table. But given the fact that the prosecution wanted the plea deal to come through, it's kind of, you know, you know, you know it's going to be interesting to see the judge try to try a case and get a, a case tried when the prosecution doesn't want to try it. So that'll be a, a real interesting thing to watch. But the bottom line on it is, it puts the th one thing that, that Joe Biden does not want in the news, back in the news. It, it puts one thing he doesn't want in the news. He does not want the Hunter Biden tax filings in the news. And he doesn't want them in the news for a simple reason, because he's got the same tax liability problem as Hunter Biden did. Because if Hunter, if if it is shown that he is the big guy, and it's shown that he did get a take on dollars from the, you know, take on dollars from the, all these transactions that Hunter Biden was involved in, and Hunter Biden is sitting there, there having to having his uh, his taxes exposed, his failure to pay exposed. The logical question is, well, who's this guy? Who's the big guy who's getting this money? And why? And that will be that will be asked time and time again. The Bidens don't want the tax issue being discussed at a time when the House Republicans are considering impeachment. They don't want it. In, they don't want it discussed because it's an, in, tax evasion is an impeachable offense, and the Biden Hunter Biden tax case flows directly to Joe Biden because Joe Biden is in fact is in fact a beneficiary, if it's shown that he's a beneficiary, and I, I say he's in fact, if he is a beneficiary and Hat was a beneficiary of Hunter Biden's uh, business schemes, and I think we'll find that out this week, um, at least the House will, will be able to confirm that that's the case this week. If that's true, then the Hunter Biden prosecution is a prosecution of Joe Biden with him being in absentia because he's just not charged, but he everybody will know he did the same thing. So it's a, they really needed that off the table. This thing falling apart is a disaster for the Biden um, impeachment defense team. And it is, uh, you know, one more, one more piece of the Biden uh, defense crumbling. So, you know, and once again, it's Hunter Biden, his, his attorneys who screwed it all up. So you look at it and you say, they got it. They greased the skids. It was going away. And then it didn't. So this is a you know, another bad sign for Joe Biden uh, moving forward. A third thing that's uh, happening regarding Joe B Hunter Biden that's uh, interesting. There's an, there's a fourth that's uh, I think probably as significant as any. But uh, the third thing that's happening that's interesting is Hunter Biden has filed ethics charges against Marjorie Taylor Greene for images that were shown on the House floor from his, that came from his laptop, which showed him in, um, uh, shall we say, it was some of the images that he might have not been fully clothed. I should put it that way. And, um, and so he files an ethics complaint against Marjorie Taylor Greene for having those images on the House floor and showing them. Well, there's a problem they, that this brings up. Because by Hunter Biden admitting that they're his images, that those are not fake images, that they are, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, <coughs> that they came from Hunter Biden's laptop, by him talking about that, by him having to go to the House Ethics Committee and say, wait a second, 
my laptop, my stuff, and it's being shown on the House floor and showing me in an unfavorable light. That's terrible. Isn't he defeating the entire argument they made for a full year, year and a half, two years? It wasn't his laptop. Isn't that admission to the House that this was his laptop, hence, and that the information on there has not been altered is true and correct? Isn't that a problem for them when they're trying to defend the uh, the statements he made related to the big guy and the big guy taking money? Isn't that a problem for him when he's trying to deny that and say things have been altered? When he's gonna when he's going to one house committee and saying, "Hey, hey guys, this is unfair. We can't, you know, it's an ethics complaint. Um, they're abusing me." He has to. He's a de facto admitting that everything on that laptop is his. And as a result, he's now in a position, it's now puts him in a position of then having to double back and say the opposite, uh, maybe a few short months from now. So that's a, it, 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 I, you know, there's sometimes you just have to let it slide. And I think they made a massive error by um, bringing up, the, allowing the veracity of the laptop be argued and forcing Joe, Joe Biden's kid, or Hunter Biden's attorneys to have to argue that the laptop is in fact true and correct, and that is him. Um, that certainly is the fact it has. Finally, there, there's uh, at least one, if not two, of Hunter Biden's associates are going to be deposed this week. Um, Devin Archer, who is a partner, a longtime friend of Hunter Biden and partner in his uh, money laundering scheme and, and deals with Ukraine and China and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And also Tony Bobulinski, who is the CEO of, that, of the corporation they put together. They're both scheduled to be deposed this week, at least Devin Archer is, I think Bobolinski is also. And so what we're going to be having now is questions asked of them that say, well, you know, Joe Biden received, you know, appears as though Joe Biden received money. It appears as though these, all these nine Bidens kept getting money. What was that for? What was that for? That's the question that, that House is going to be asking of these guys who had intimate inside knowledge of the workings of the corporation, of the money laundering scheme. And under oath, they're gonna to have to tell the truth. And they have no reason not to because they've already been had their sl throats slit by and abandoned by the Bidens. So we're gonna get answers and the House is gonna get answers that is going to that will um, lay out how the money laundering scheme worked, will fill in the blanks on that money laundering, laundering scheme and will put the and put the big guy squarely in the in the crosshairs of the of the impeachment because if they do have knowledge if they have witnesses saying yes he was taking money now that's pretty compelling but with the enhanced power that that uh, Kevin McCarthy is going to give these committees to look at based on a pending impeachment they're going to be able to force the Treasury Department to turn over all the banking records, to turn over all the suspicious activity reports for transferring monies more than ten thousand dollars that they that they're going to have. So they're going to have that already that exists that are just pro forma. So they're going to be able to get the whole money trail. They're going to be able to rip this thing to rip this thing down and burn down the the Biden uh, money laundering scheme and. When you have the people who are at the top of it, you know, if they're cooperating, they're going to sit there and they're going to tell you where to look and say, hey, did you look over in this corner? There's a lot of dust bunnies over here to see. And so this is a and this is all due to, you know, Hunter Biden's friends who we had running this scheme and people who. So once again, Hunter, bad, bad week for Hunter Biden, but disastrous week for Joe Biden. And, you know, it's. Uh, Hunter Biden is proving to be the the, uh, the son that uh, just the gift that keeps giving and uh, and I, I, I let's just put it this way I wouldn't want to be at Thanksgiving dinner um, after all the stuff comes down related to Hunter Biden and largely driven out of this week so with that we're gonna I'm just going to turn to the comments. It's a, there are four things. We normally focus on one, but I thought that the Hunter Biden strat kind of situation as a whole was worth commenting about. Um, yeah, uh, and it's, I, I'm just going to go to Michael because, the, you know, the, the, the Biden art is such, is such an obvious 
uh, dodge and such an obvious way of laundering money. And you were, you know, and you were right. Um, and in, in Michael, in terms of it, but the, you know, and whether the artwork was uh, Biden's, Hunter Biden's artwork or if he was stealing other people's artwork, which is, you know, as likely, the bottom line is we've, Americans for Limited Government through Tony Bronco, uh, we've probably done three or four cartoons where we show different things like uh, Chinese President Xi with a bunch of Hunter Biden, Biden artwork in the backdrop um, sitting there calling, you know, calling shots in America. And that's a, you know, because the fact of the matter is, you know, you don't have to be a genius to sell this artwork. You don't have to be a marketing wizard to sell this artwork. It's an, it's an obvious, it's an obvious um, sale, you know, sale for, uh, for uh, pay for play scheme. And, you know, and truly, you know, struggling artists there's a reason they're not a struggling artist people are actually competent artists who've who studied and have, have extraordinary talent and can draw i you know, draw me or you know draw around you know hunter biden and draw them in circles now they're not selling their art for fifty thousand dollars a piece now they're selling their art for you know they're basically down on the boardwalks trying to sell their art at you know this a summer festival for uh on a weekend and so they can make enough money to go to the next summer festival and sell their art. I mean, that's what that's what a struggling artist is. Um, it isn't a guy who sits there and decides, "Gee, my dad's my dad's president of the United States, so I'm going to sell some art." And uh, you know, so, all in all, uh, you know, it's it's the little things that matter. But I think it's the audaciousness of the art sale that kind of. Uh, bad timing you, you can afford to be audacious if you don't have every all the other uh grifts and schemes coming collapsing around your head but the most but engaging in the, uh, an absolute obvious scheme at the beginning of the presidency um and, and then having that that scheme show that it was a cool at least one of the people who bought art got something in return and you have to, you know, they can say, I can't prove that they got that in return because they bought the art. But given the history of the, the pattern of behavior, the benefit of the doubt kind of gets lost um, for the Bidens. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, Kathy, I, I, I'm going to, I, I'm not disagreeing with you in terms of the uh, uh, Merrick Garland uh, trying uh, the AG doing everything they can to bury this and to, and to protect Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. Um, I think Merrick Garland has a problem though. Um, he's going to get impeached. I think he'll be impeached before Biden does. And the reason he's going to be impeached is because what Congress is really upset about, they, you know, Joe Biden is Joe Biden. Merrick Garland is destroying the rule of law in this country. And I think that's the that's the problem. And they need they really ha are concerned about what's happening in the Justice Department and the and the destruction of the rule of law in America under his under his watch, at least the continuation of that destruction under his watch. And so we're going to so I wouldn't be surprised if Merrick Garland doesn't actually face articles of impeachment for lying to Congress um before uh, joe biden faces articles of impeachment uh for um the various abuses of power that he's engaged in um i'm gonna go down to speculation row with michael i wonder who harris is going to be appointed to appoint for vice president um it has to be approved for, through uh hill through both houses of congress um you know, it does have to be approved. And, you know, that's a great question. Um, my guess is that she won't appoint anybody. Um, and and if she does, if she does, it'll be a situation like um, back in 75, um, Gerald Ford, when he uh, became president, he didn't, uh, he, he, he had a problem. He had to appoint somebody for vice president who wasn't going to run for office in 76. And because the expectation was Ford wouldn't run for office in 76. 
And so that's your um, that's your point on this is that you've got to find some. She's going to have to find somebody uh, who can be confirmed by both parties, and that she won't feel threatened by. Um, now, my prediction is that she will be um, that she will agree not to run herself um, for the office if, if Biden's impeached, and and that that will be part of a deal, any deal that's cut. And so she will then, um, and that will open the field to uh, Gavin Newsom uh, and any number of other Democrats who would want to run, who are uh, genuine socialists and would be more um, more fitting to the AOC wing of the Democrat Party than even Kamala Harris is. Um, so my, so if she does pick somebody, it will be somebody who is uh, benign and um, and probably somebody nobody even knows who they are. So that would be my guess. Um, she won't pick somebody who's young, ambitious, and hoping to be make a career for themselves, because the other Democrats in Congress won't let that happen because they don't want somebody to get a step up on them. Um, let's see. They sit back and lie and say our country's doing well. Yeah, well, that's you know that's politics. Their their job is to promote their their guy. Their job is to promote. Uh, is to take uh, scant facts and try to turn them into positives and um, and whistle by the graveyard and hope that they can have enough people whistling by the graveyard with them to survive politically. That's that's unfortunately part of politics. Um, it would be I, I'm gonna I'm gonna Dennis I was gonna close off, but I just have to say first of all, Nancy Plus is from California which is where Kamala Harris is from. So there's a constitutional question whether she's eligible, but from a, there, I don't think there's any way in heck Kamala Harris picks Nancy Pelosi because Pelosi is smart enough and tough enough to effectively become president and break any deal and run again to save the country is the one person who can save the country. And that's not the direction they're going to want to go. Um, it's they could try Pelosi. I mean, it's a it's an idea. Um, recognizing that Ford picked Nelson Rockefeller, who was a multiple time former governor of New York, multiple time failed uh, candidate for president for Republican Party. Um, you know, for those of us who are old and remember this stuff, Goldwater beat Rockefeller at the, the convention in uh, in San Francisco, the Republican convention in 64 in San Francisco. And Rockefeller was the representative of the establishment Republicans and Goldwater was the representative of the upstart conservatives. And, um, and so Rockefeller was seen as being a, a candidate who what, whose, path, whose future was behind him and had the uh, enough support from members of the Senate that they would support him without fearing that he was going to try to become a, you know, he was going to uh, use a launching pad for a new a remake on his career. So it's a, um, so Pelosi, I don't think, I think anybody with a, with a keen sense of her ability to rise from the ashes would know that she, if given the opportunity to be vice president, um, is somebody who very well could use as a launching pad for her own candidacy for vice president. And uh, from a confirmation standpoint, I think you know they'd probably do some courtesy for a confirmation. But the fact of the matter is, she'd have a lot of questions to answer about how uh, about a lot of uh, stock deals and other things that got done and. Uh, and some other challenges with her life. So there would be a lot of things that haven't really been scrutinized would get scrutinized. And you know, she just may want to retire back to her freezer of ice cream. I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate you all tuning in. I, I just thought it was an interesting day to talk about Hunter Biden. He's in the news on different things. And the fact is, you know, isn't it ironic that just petty graft like artwork, it just highlights Give so every single person out there understands this. Every single person understands that Hunter Biden is not an artist. And people were buying his art for lots of money, supposedly sold over a million dollars worth of art, 
uh, were buying it for lots of money, not because they wanted the art, but because they wanted the access. It's something is so straightforward. They spent all this time and money creating an elaborate money laundering scheme. And the thing that's going to be what it's going to drive the Republicans crazy, by the way. The thing that's going to solidify this this grifter, this team of grifters, this house of grift, um, the Biden administration. The thing that's going to solidify that pe in people's mind is Hunter Biden selling art, because we can understand it. Everybody can understand that. Everybody knows what's going on. Nobody's fooled. There's no there's no sleight of hand here. This is just plain old fashioned graft. It's it's as old as the old day is long, and this is a uh, and I just find it ironic that with all the uh, that this I believe will end up being the picture of the the P RSV people minds that prove a very complicated gra case of graft against the Bidens. This simplifies it. It gives it an executive summary of one one picture, one line, and everybody will get it. So with that. We'll take off. We will talk to you tomorrow about uh, something else. Hopefully, I'll be working, coming from my home or from my work, um, and we'll be doing a little bit more in terms of uh, graphics for you. And but that will be uh, that will be tomorrow. Look forward to it. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is Rick Manning, Americans for Limited Government.